Hey everybody, it's Josh here. In this tutorial, we're gonna go over Google Chrome's Inspect Element tool, and I'm gonna show you how I utilize it when I'm designing websites with WordPress and Divi. Now, before we dive in, I'll say that most of my tutorials are Divi related. This is actually applicable whether you use WordPress or really any kind of sites, you just need to be using Google Chrome. Uh, Firefox has an Inspect Element tool that's similar, although I'm not familiar with it, but I would imagine a lot of the things we go over, go over in this one are going to be similar to that. Uh, so I know Safari does it and I'm not sure about the other browsers. So I use Google Chrome. I recommend it. So you do need to be utilizing that if you're going to use Inspect Element. So with that said, I'm going to show you just some basics. I'm going to show you how I use it. And then at the end of the tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take this style that I have on my site with these blog posts, these kind of actions. And we're gonna use inspect element to look at the code and then we're gonna put it over here on my tutorial site to style those the same. And I'm gonna show you how I do it using inspect element. So with that said, let's dive in. So the first thing that you wanna do is when you have Google Chrome and you're using it, you wanna right click and click inspect. And this will take you into inspect element. Now, inspect element is very robust. There's a lot you can do with it. And to be honest, I don't know that much. I'm not an expert. I'm just going to show you how I utilize it because there you can see there's a ton of settings. And when you open it, it may look a little bit different for you. Um, I prefer to have it at the bottom of my screen. And a lot of times I'm, I'm, I'm working, I'm recording this tutorial on a laptop, but a lot of times I'm using a bigger screen for my other development. So you have some more screen width. And you can, what's cool about Inspect Element is you can kind of tweak it and make it your own. So if it's not popping up on the bottom, what you can do is you can click these little three dots here, and this is where you can put this. So I could put it on the right, on the dock side there. I can go back up here and I could put it on the left like that. Or if I wanted to, I could actually take this off the screen entirely if I want to have this, you know, kind of separate and off the screen. So again, whatever works for you, I prefer to have it at the bottom. And then the other setting I want to show you before we dive in here is that you can also change the, the, the background color. A lot of coders prefer to have a darker background. It's a little easier on the eyes. Um, so you could do that. You could go into settings and then you could go to your color scheme right here. So settings, and now I prefer to have it light. I, I think I've just been doing it for so long, I prefer that. So once you have your uh, you know, Inspect Element tool set up the way you like it, let me show you some basics of it. There's really only a few things that I do with it. Again, there's a lot, and if you're not used to HTML or CSS, this probably looks really scary, but don't worry, I'll show you the basics. It does help though if you're familiar with CSS in particular uh, to be able to use this. But there's only a few things I look at. I'm only really interested in the CSS. You can look at the JavaScript and PHP and all this other stuff, but I generally use this when I'm making CSS edits to make my sites look cool and to look at what other people are doing and kind of examine their code and kind of make it my own. So to do that, what's really cool is, again, when you're, when you're in your inspect element, you can right click and I can inspect this element right here. And you can see when I did that, now if you've, if you've watched my tutorials previously, you see that I do this all the time. I right click and then I go in here and you can actually look at the code with inspect element. It's so cool. What you're gonna see on the left initially, as long as you have elements checked, is the HTML or the classes that are assigned. So I can look in here and I can see that this has a class of inner text. To the right, is where you see the actual styles. This is the CSS. So from here, I can see that, okay, I, this has the class of, you know, ET PB text enter, and then here's the class, and here's where I can have some fun. And again, this is only examining the site. What I do on the browser does not change the actual site. I've had a lot of questions on that, and I just wanna make sure you know, when you're playing around with a site or you're designing your own site, whatever you do here is not gonna affect the actual files you need to change it here and then take that code and put it in your style sheet. So for example, for this inner text, if I wanted to give this a color of purple, let's say, you can see right there, I just changed it there and it's gonna change everything that has that class of inner text. So that's how easy it is to use inspect element. And again, this is where I generally play around with my settings and my colors and then I take that code and put it in the style sheet, which we'll do here shortly. So that's just a quick rundown of the difference between this left side and this right side, because at first I was very confused, because you can see you have console, sources, network, 
Honestly, guys, I don't use any of this. Um, you can check performance. There's some some tutorials you can go into in that. And my buddy John with Superfly has a really in-depth tutorial on this that I'll make sure to link to if you wanna watch that. And it goes into a little more detail on this. But really, all I do is I look at the elements, which tells me you know what the classes are, and it gives me some HTML. And then I look at the styles. On this side, you can see there's computed, I don't know what that means, but it's kind of cool that this shows you the position, the margin, margin, the, the border and the padding. Breakpoints, properties, no idea what any of that means. All I need to know is elements and styles. A couple other things I wanna show you real quick is you notice to see this, I did right click inspect. And that's a good way to look at elements, but there's an even faster way to do it. And that's by clicking this little uh, mouse over thing right here. So I can click this and this is basically a highlighter. So you'll see, Anything that I go through right here, it's gonna highlight. And on the left, it'll pull that code right there. So you can see this right here. If I click on this element, boom, it just popped open the code right there. Same thing, I can go through here, and every element that I'm oh, hover overing over, it's gonna highlight. And that's really, really useful when you wanna look at code in detail. So I click this, I can look at the code that I wrote for this little email form right here. So super, super useful to be able to use this highlighter tool. The other thing I wanna show you real quick is that you've, again, if you've seen any of my tutorials, I do this all the time, is you can click the responsive icon here, and this will give us the ability to look at mobile and tablet view. So generally, it'll give you kind of the most recent versions of phones. It's funny because just like last week, I think I looked at this and it said iPhone 6, and then I opened it again, and then it was iPhone 7. So I think they're staying pretty up to date with the Inspect Element tool here, but it's really cool. So if I wanna look at things on the phone, I can click this, and I can see exactly how it's gonna look on the phone. I can do the same thing if I click iPad, and I can see how it's gonna look on the iPad. And what's really cool about this too is, you know, that's kind of small right there. You can click percentage, and I can just click 100, and I can zoom in or I could even take it out a little bit further. I could go 75, that's a pretty good view right there. And again, it's all just with inspect element, and this way I can look at just the mobile settings. So for example, you can see right here, my contact form, I tell you what, let me back out of this and I'll show you what I mean. The contact form right here, the email sign up, when I zoom this in like this, it's gonna change. It's gonna, these forms are gonna align below each other, these fields. So. With the code, what I can do is I can right click, inspect element on this, and what I'm gonna do is gonna go into the responsive view. So that's the tablet right there, and you can see it changes, or actually let me go to, let's try a phone. I think it changes on the phone view. There we go. So you can see this element right here, and I'm gonna use my highlighter. I'm gonna click this element, and I'm wondering when does that change from the width? So right here you can see the width of that field is at 100%, which means it's gonna take up the entire screen. If I uncheck that, oh, my 49% pops up, which is what it was before the screen hit 980 pixels. So it's really that easy and it's that cool to be able to look at these elements. So I just highlighted that section and I can look at the code and I can tweak it and I can make it my own. So that's really, I hate to say that's it because it's, you know, it's a robust tool, but Guys, I'm telling you, that's all I use this for. I literally just have the element selected here so I can highlight everything. I have the style selected here, which shows me the code. And I have it on the bottom of my browser. I prefer the white, the, the light background, but you can of course choose the dark. And then I use the responsive ends right here to look at things on mobile. And then I use my highlighter to go in and sometimes select each you know little uh, little element there. So. With that in mind, now that we have a basic understanding of that, what I wanna show you and what I wanna do is let's say you look at my site and you're like, man, I really like how you have the blog posts. I like how when you hover over these, the, the color changes, there's a, a drop shadow below it, and the image does a cool thing where it kinda of zips up like that. So we wanna apply the same look or something similar to my test site right here, my tutorial site. Now, before we do this, I find it very, very important to tell you that you can look at other people's code generally with inspect elements. Some sites have security locks on them and firewalls and things like that to where you can't look at the code, but most sites don't. And what I do all the time is I will right click and I will look at people's code and I will make it my own. 
I say that to say that I highly recommend you don't rip people's code off. Technically, code is open source, so unless it's copywritten, I don't know of a way you can steal it per se, but it's kind of a, a douchey move to take somebody's code and copy it verbatim on your site. So what I recommend doing, and you can even do this on my site, is you can look at my code, you can right click inspect element, and you can look at it and you can see what I've done, but then make it your own. Change some colors, play around with it, have some fun with it, and you know, be creative and create your own look. So again, with this in mind, we wanna take this look and we wanna apply it to these three blog posts here on my test site. So first things first, we're not gonna style this exactly, but I'm really just worried about the, the text or the, uh, the hover over state. So I'm gonna inspect element and I'm gonna look and I can see that this has Let's see here, there should be, there we go, there's a post H2, and I'm just looking through the code, and that's what's really cool is when you look through this, you can kind of see all the, co all the code for all this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see that the post H2, the heading two, has a font family of Gotham Medium. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this code, again, because anything I adjust here is just adjusting the browser, it's not actually adjusting the site. I'm gonna to go to my style sheet. If you're curious how I just did that, please refer back to a previous tutorial on where to put your custom CSS that I'll link to. So first thing I'm gonna do, actually, so I wanna do H2, and I'm gonna put that font family in there as my H2. And what we might wanna do is, since this is in the post, uh, let's see here, post H2. Let's do it right here. Let's actually add this class. So we're gonna give this a complete class of the H2 right there. Let me jump back to my style sheet. So we're gonna make sure that this only changes the post H2. So now we've got that in there. The other thing I wanna do is just try to kinda of copy some of this style. And I think I have some styles in Divi, so some of this is being overwritten, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and give this a font size of 18 like I have there, and I'm gonna add important after the pixels to make sure that does work. And I'm betting there's some other settings here. I'm just looking in here, and this is again how I do all this. I just look through and I can either copy all these settings or tweak them. I see right here that there's a text align of center. So I'm going to put that in my style sheet. Whoop, we don't wanna do that. I must've copied something else. Let's go, text align center. Oops, sorry, I messed that up. It's actually text align. Center, there we go. And this looks pretty thick. I think I probably had a font weight of bold or something like that. But again, this is being overwritten because I did some things in Divi. But you can kind of you know see what this is generally. So I'm gonna give this font weight here, this font weight of 700. Let's clean this up just to make sure this looks good. Okay, so that's gonna be a start. And what we're gonna do is now that we bounce over to my test site, let's go ahead and clear the cache and refresh. Okay, so you can see, now that we added those styles in, it changed the title of these posts right here, very similar to what I have. Next thing that we wanna do is we wanna worry about the hover over state. So, and actually, before we do that, let me show you, by default, Divi gives you the option to have kind of the, the first part of the text in here, and there's no way to turn that off in the settings as of right now, so wouldn't you know it, we're gonna inspect element. Check this out, this is another thing you can do without having to copy other code, you can kind of look at this. And I can see that this information right here is under a class called post content. So check this out. Say I don't want that in any of my blog posts. I'm gonna just click into this and I'm gonna take post content. I know it's a class, so what I'm gonna do is add a dot, which means it's a class. I'm gonna put post content. And I'm gonna add display none, which means, and I tell you what, just in case I'm gonna do important, and this is gonna tell any of this post content to not to display. So check this out, I've got that set. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Let's refresh now. And now when I scroll down, there we go, it's gone. So that's exactly what I did on my site here. I, do, I, don't, I didn't want the uh, first part of that paragraph to be there. So now that we've got that, what we wanna do is we wanna worry about these hover over effects. Now this is probably my favorite part about inspect element. So you see that when I hover over these, there's a few things. There's the, the drop shadow, the text changes, and the actual image itself changes. What I can do is I'm going to select with my tool, I'm gonna to select the entire thing, because the first thing I wanna do is add that little drop shadow right there. Now once I have that selected, you can see right here it's selected. Under filter, it gives you an option for hover. 
this is really important and I do this on a daily basis when I'm writing CSS is you can select this and then I can look at the hover state. So it's super, super cool. You see I clicked hover and it automatically showed you what the hover over state looks like. Pretty awesome, right? So now that I've got that, go ahead and click off of that and let's find the code. So generally, and, and this can be kind of confusing, it's just gonna take a little while for you to get used to, but you'll see the original settings along with the hover over settings. So you can see here, I have my blogs in the grid format and it's showing me that Anytime the blogs are in a grid, the post is going to have these settings here. So you can see I've got like a background color. I could change this. This is gonna change the original color right there. But then it's gonna show me the hover over state, which is right here. So I know that when I hover over these, it's gonna show up with this box shadow. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna wanna go ahead and copy this entire little class and the code, and we're gonna drop that in our style sheet. So now, when I hover over my tutorial blogs, which are also set up in the grid format, then it should have that same hover over uh, the shadow. So let's go ahead and go here, we'll refresh. Okay, so now when I scroll down and I hover over these, they should have a drop shadow. Boom, there we go. Now we wanna adjust the text. Let's look at, I've got my selector tool, let's look at this H2 content, and right there you can see, the hover over state right here, because I think I still, no, I don't have hover over selected, but sometimes if you click an element, it will show you that. So you can see that every time I'm hover, hover overing a blog post with the grid format, the H2 is gonna have that color. So you guessed it, we're gonna take this and drop it in our style sheet, save that. And tell you, tell you what, while we're at it, let's go ahead and look at this image, because I know this is gonna work all right. Let's look at this image in detail. I actually, I don't even remember how I did that. Let's see. And here we go. Okay, so you can see, okay, yeah, this is cool. I remember when I did this. All right, so what's really cool about this is now I added an extra ID that says this is a blog layout because I have different posts on my site. Um, we'll get into that in a future tutorial I have coming up on CSS, but you can basically assign more IDs and more classes if you wanna have similar effects but different effects for certain posts. Because what I'm doing right now is changing every single blog post. So I added this little blog layout right here just to change the layout of this particular section. But anyway, with that in mind, you can see that anytime I have a post and I hover over that post, the image link right here, you can see this, A means link and then IMG for image. This is saying that that image, once it's hovered over, is going to go negative five pixels high and it's gonna have a border on the bottom, which is what you're seeing right there. Now, if I uncheck this, you'll see that the border will show up, but it's not gonna move right there. So does that make sense? You can see where I just added top, negative five on the hover over, and then it just moved that image up a little bit. It's subtle, but it's a really cool way to tweak that and make that your own. So I'm gonna copy just from here over because I don't wanna take that extra class that I put in. But you could always experiment with that and you know kind of make it your own. So now I'm gonna save that. Let's go ahead and go back to our site. Let's refresh just to make sure. And again, all those settings that we just put in place should come true. Boom, there we go. Pretty awesome, right? Now there's a few other settings here that probably need adjusted, but this is exactly how I have my blog set up on my site. So when somebody says, hey, how did you get that effect? You can actually use inspect element, look at my code, take it, tweak it and make it your own. And again, you just saw how quickly we can use inspect element to take the style of a website like I have for my blog posts. We just take the styles, we make it our own. And again, you know, I could change this instead of that green, I could go red and we could go ahead and save that. And now, when we go back to our site, you can see all those styles. Right now it's green, but once I refresh, I should show up red instead of green. And there we go. So it's that easy, guys. You can take something using Inspect Element to make it your own. It's awesome, it saves me a ton of time. Uh, I really don't even do like Photoshop mockups and stuff like that anymore because I use this pretty much every time I design and develop. So I hope this has helped, guys. If you have any questions, let me know, otherwise, Enjoy right-clicking, inspecting element with Google Chrome and have fun uh, helping your, your Divi design process. All right, thanks guys.